All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad, and today I am giving you a sneak peek at Longer's new LK4X 3D printer. So this is Longer's latest release in their 3D printer line. Very awesome printer, a ton of cool new upgraded features right out of the box. And speaking of the box, let me show you how I got this thing unboxed, set up, and show you some of those features right now. Upon opening your LK4X printer, everything that you need will be right on the top there. Your hardware, your power cable, your scraper, test filament, manual, filament runout sensor, the filament mount, everything is right there. So go ahead and take the top gantry out and that will reveal some other goodies, the 3D touch and the LCD screen. So after you get that all out, you can go ahead and get all of the foam off and start putting the unit together. First thing you want to do is plug in your Z limit switch. If you try to do this after it's bolted in, it's a little bit difficult to plug in. So go ahead and plug that in, make sure it's firmly in place, tuck the wire off to the side. Then you can go ahead and bolt the top gantry into place with the printer. Once that's secure, you want to go ahead and plug the harness into the heated build plate. And then you want to take the harness underneath with the label Z and plug that into the Z stepper motor. Next, you'll notice a harness kind of going up the top through the Z axis with an E on the end of it and a little orange tab. Uh, and that's for the filament runout sensor. Uh, it's kind of ran through, kind of looped through a little bit, so you have to untangle it in a sense. I noticed it was kind of difficult to get it back through the channel, so what I did is took a pair of snippers and just snipped off the one tab and the little orange uh, label there that said E. You can put that back on, but it just went through a lot easier. I didn't want to put too much force on the printer. Uh, kind of untangle it and then run it back up the channel on the right side. Don't do it on the one on the left, do it on the one on the right. And then it comes with some uh, cord concealer here that just holds it nice and tight in the channel so it's not popping out or it doesn't come loose. After you have that routed through there, you can plug that into the filament runout sensor. Use the supplied screw to go ahead and tighten that in. Now, very important, make sure you run your wires like this around that Z access stepper. If you go on the inside, uh, it is going to actually hit the build plate on the Y axis when it comes back. So do it around like I have here. Uh, don't do it on the inside, do it on the outside. Another really good idea is to go ahead and grab some zip ties and secure these wires down. Now you wanna make sure you have some slack on that thicker wire there which I have here don't do them too tight but just do them to where they're nice and snug and secure and they're not going to hit anything especially on that Y bed continue on by mounting the filament holder on top of the printer with the supplied screws and then we can mount the 3d touch very important make sure you loop the wire under the arced part of the mount for the 3d touch if you try to do it another way uh, you won't be able to plug the 3d touch in so first just plug the 3d touch into the harness and then put the bracket with the contouring arc around the 3d touch and use the supply screws to screw it in place Once the 3D touch is tightened and secured in place, you can go ahead and plug your LCD screen in and mount that to the right of the printer. After that's all set, you can go ahead and snip the two clear zip ties off the X and Y bed. Uh, at that point, you can go ahead and check your belts and make sure they're nice and tight. This is very important. You definitely want your belts and everything secure. Uh, in this instance, uh, the X was a little bit loose, so I had to tighten it, and the Y bed was a little bit loose as far as the rollers go, so you can use the supplied wrenches to go ahead and tighten those as need be. Once everything's nice and tight, you can remove the voltage label. And if you are using a 110 outlet, you wanna switch that over to the 115 volt. Uh, if you are using a 220, you'd obviously wanna leave it, but we're here in the States, so we wanna switch that over. Once that's good, you can go ahead and plug it in and get your machine fired up. And then just double checking our work, go ahead and from the touch screen and make sure everything's working properly, left to right, front to back, top to bottom. Uh, just make sure everything is working in proper command from the touch screen to the printer. This just reassures everything is plugged in properly and we are one step closer to getting our printer up and going. Next, you can go ahead and preheat your nozzle and your build plate to the proper temperatures. This is again, just reassuring that everything is plugged in and the printer is functioning properly. Once the machine is warmed up, you wanna go ahead and start the manual bed leveling process. That way it's set up to initiate the auto bed leveling sequence with the 3D touch. 
Best way to do this is to turn the knobs left and right to either tighten them or loosen them. And by using a piece of paper, you wanna get it close to the nozzle, uh, sliding it forward and back. You wanna feel a, a little bit of a scrape from the nozzle. You don't want the paper to flow too smoothly, but have a little bit of bite. It should look something similar to that. You can also use the Z offset to set your nozzle more precisely to the bed. That way, if you are having an issue manually getting it set up, you can use that Z offset to more accurately place your nozzle to the bed. Once you have the bed nice and level, you can go ahead and initiate the automatic leveling. The printer will then probe the bed at all 16 points on it and make sure it's good to go. Once that's all set, we can go ahead and load the filament and print our benchy. Once your print is complete, this printer has a cool unload feature where while your hot end is still warm, you hit the unload button and it automatically pops the filament out for you, which is a really nice touch. Once your bed plate is nice and cool, using the PEI magnetic plate, you can go ahead and give it a little bend and it pops the print right off. And speaking of the print, let's take a look at this Benchy. So, you know, looking pretty good here considering there was no tuning or no calibration done. Pretty solid print. I also did a couple more uh, festive prints for the season here, uh, a couple Christmas trees. And again, with no tuning or calibration, these also came out, uh, you know, really awesome. So overall, the Longer LK4X, a really awesome printer with some great features, which we'll look at once more right now. Well, there you have it guys, uh, some of the features and highlights of this great printer, which so far I am really impressed with. Everything from the bed leveling feature to the direct drive to the dual cooling fans, the belt adjustment, the full LCD color, the silent board. This printer is chocked full of awesome upgrades right out of the box that'll definitely leave you with a great experience for a 3D printer and leave you with some awesome prints too. You know, a lot of times people go out and they'll get a printer and then they just have to put a ton of money into upgrades. This model here just has everything that you need. You know, without even doing any calibration yet, uh, so far it really does have some awesome quality prints. So I am very impressed with how this printer is already printing. A lot of cool features for this printer. You can get great prints right out of the box. Longer has an awesome introductory price on this, the MSRP price on this printer is $369. Right now, you can actually pick it up for $299. And if you use my promotional code here, 20LK4X, you will get an additional $20 off this printer. So whether you're new to 3D printing or a veteran, this is an awesome option to add to your 3D printing arsenal. All of the features that it offers is gonna give you a great printer right out of the box without breaking the bank. As I mentioned in the video, I am gonna be doing two other videos with this. Just a general synopsis of how to get a feel for the machine and how it works. I'll also go through some calibration setups to see just how accurate this is tuned from the factory. So we'll go ahead and do E-steps, we'll do flow, just give you more ins and outs, a deeper look into the printer. My last video will be my full review. I am going to be printing a full Iron Man helmet on this, as well as some bigger prints on here. For the most part, I've just done smaller prints on this, but I am gonna push the limits of this printer, see how big we can print, see how it holds up, and see just how well it does. Once again, I wanted to thank Longer for supplying me with this printer. So far, it's been absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to see what they have in store next. If you liked this video or enjoyed it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you have a Longer printer and you wanted to share your experience with me, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. Again, I will leave that link in the description. That way, if anybody wants to pick this printer up, you can click that link, go ahead and put that promotional code in, pick this guy up for $279, which is an absolutely fantastic deal. Thank you once again for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you enjoy all things 3D printing, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Be on the lookout for my next two videos with this as we go ahead and fine tune this printer a little bit more and see just how big we can print on the longer LK4X. That's it for now, guys. It's DW signing off. We'll see you next time.